Welcome to the Voices of the Resurrection. Our first voice is the disciple Simon Peter. He is sitting on a bench with his head in his hands. He is visibly distraught. His wife Anna comes up and sits beside him. Simon Peter, you have been home for three days now and you haven't told me a thing. Speak to me. I need to know what happened in Jerusalem. <laughs> I, I don't know where to start. I, I'm such a failure. I let my best friend down when he need me, needed me most. You mean Jesus? Yes. <sighs> the night before his death, when we were eating at the Passover, Jesus said that I would deny him. He said, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith should not fail. And, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But I said to him, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me. I was so sure of myself. I was determined to not let Jesus down. When the mob came after him in the garden, I, I swung my sword to protect him. I was ready to kill for Jesus. You killed a man? <laughs> no. You know, I don't have much experience with swords. My mighty swing only managed to cut off his right ear. Do you know what Jesus said? He told me to put the sword away and that he healed the man's ear. He healed the man who was arresting him. He told the mob that if they were seeking him, that he should let the rest of us go. And uh, we ran. We ran away like little boys. We ran away and just left Jesus. John and I found courage somewhere, and we found the mob at a distance, right in the courtyard of the high priest. And then it's... And then you what? I... I, Simon, tell me. I, I, I denied him three times, just like he said I would. After the third denial, the rooster crowed, and the Lord looked at me. His eyes looked right through me, and again I ran and wept. It, it wasn't supposed to be that way. Jesus was supposed to reign as King of Israel in Jerusalem, not be crucified like some some criminal. Our second Voices of the Resurrection is Mary, the mother of the disciple James, and Mary Magdalene. The scene opens very early on Sunday morning. Mary Magdalene, is that you? Yes, it's me. Are you ready to go to the tomb? The sun is just beginning to come up. Here, help me with this, carry the spices we've prepared for the Lord's body. Such difficult days we have been through. Yes, who would have thought when we first met Jesus that it would end like this? I remember the day my son James came home, so very excited. Mama, he said, we have found the Messiah of Israel. I asked him who it was, and he said, Jesus of Nazareth. So the next time Jesus came to Galilee, I went to hear him speak. None of our religious leaders ever spoke like he spoke. He spoke with authority. His words convicted my heart. Yet brought comfort at the same time. Yes, that's it exactly. The first time I heard him speak, he was healing people with all kinds of diseases. People who were paralyzed and those who were demon-possessed. Huge crowds followed him wherever he went. I remember that day. That was the day that Jesus cast seven demons out of me. He changed my whole life. I had been possessed by demons for so long, I'd forgotten what life was like without them. You've never told me. What was your life like when you were, de I mean, before you knew Jesus? You can say it. 
when I was demon possessed, it's okay. It doesn't bother me anymore. All that is past. The demons made me crazy. I would be going along as normal and then a demon would take over and I couldn't do anything to stop it. I was just so hopeless. But then I met Jesus. I just knew he had the power to heal me and he did with just a word. Oh, the power in that voice. It was not the voice of a mere man, but the very voice of God, the long awaited Messiah of Israel. He told me that my sins were forgiven. Never had I known such joy. Was that when you began to travel with Jesus and his disciples? No, for a while I still kept my business in Magdala. But then one day while I was listening to Jesus, he said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Those words come to me. You couldn't get away from them. Yes, they drew me irresistibly. I decided to sell my business and use that money to help support Jesus's ministry. I did the same thing, as did several other women. People were repenting, confessing their sins and evil deeds, and believing that Jesus was the one sent from God. It was exciting to see so many people coming back to God. It was wonderful. We knew Jesus was different. The people hailed him as a king. When we neared the Mount of Olives five days before the Passover, Jesus sent two of his disciples into a village to get a donkey and a colt. They brought the animals, laid their clothes on them, and set him on it. Then the crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them in the path. The crowd shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, the king of Israel. When we came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. How unfaithful they were. Not a week later, their hosannas turned into shouts of crucify him. It makes no sense. Jesus celebrated the Passover feast with his disciples. John told me that Jesus then said that one of his disciples would betray him. None of the men knew who it was. They couldn't tell what a son of Satan Judas was, but the Lord knew. After the meal, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus told them many things that night. He obviously knew what was coming. The betrayal of Judas with a kiss, the mob of men who came to arrest him, the trials all through the night, the mocking, the beatings, the crown of thorns, the crucifixion. <laughs> It was so awful to watch. I wanted to run, to leave that horrible sight, but I couldn't. I loved him too much that I could not leave him to die alone. The Roman guards made him carry his own cross, but he was so badly beaten that he had no strength left. They grabbed a man and forced him to carry it for Jesus. We came to Golgotha and they crucified him there. They put over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Amazingly, even after all they had done to him, Jesus cried, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Darkness came over the land from about noon to three, a darkness such as I had never experienced before. After those three hours, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit and died. When he died, it seemed as if the whole earth was wailing. The earth quaked and rocks split apart. The veil in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom as if God was opening the way for all to come to him. The graves were opened and many people who were dead came back to life. One of the soldiers guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened and said, 
truly, this was the Son of God. Joseph of Arimathea went to Governor Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. When Pilate commanded the body to be given to him, we watched as Joseph and Nicodemus took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in Joseph's own new tomb. They rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and left. Oh, Mary, I just thought of something. Who will roll that huge stone from the door of the tomb for us so that we can put the spices on Jesus' body? As the two Marys approached the tomb, an earthquake violently... Oh my God! 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 It's another earthquake! An angel speaks to the women. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. He's gone! He's gone! He's alive! Did you hear what the angel said? Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. We must tell Peter and the others. Our final voice of the resurrection is the disciple Thomas. Every one of us has times in our lives that we regret, that we carry around like stones in a sack, times of failure where we were not as fearless or as smart or as faithful as we would like to think ourselves to be. Times where we failed miserably, despite our own best intentions. I had such times myself. Times I failed. The only one who ever failed, whoever has never failed me. My name is Thomas. Some would say, doubting Thomas. Yet I am one of the Lord's disciples. I thought I was bold and fearless. A time when Jesus was determined to go to Judah after they'd threatened to stone him, I said, let us also go, that we may die with him. And I meant it. I was willing to die with him until the possibility became a distant reality. I fled with the rest of the disciples when Jesus was arrested, and something just broke inside of me. I couldn't conceive of a Messiah that would be crucified. My grief was all the stronger for me having deserted him. The only way... I could think to cope with the situation was to just shut down, quit feeling. On the third day after his crucifixion and burial, some of our women came to where we were assembled and said that Jesus had risen from the dead, and I did not believe them. My heart was as hard as sun-baked bricks. When the Clopas and his wife came and they said, um... They had seen him on the road to Emmaus. That was too much. I couldn't take such talk anymore. My hero was dead, and people were making jokes about him being alive. I had had enough, so before I left before they could finish their story. The next day, the other disciples came looking for me and found me in the marketplace, aimlessly wandering from stall to stall, wanting with all my heart to think that life wouldn't would be normal again but knowing that it wouldn't the, um, the other disciples said to me we have seen the Lord bitterly I said to them unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side I will not believe they pleaded with me but I took a swing at Matthew and stomped out of the marketplace Later, I went to Matthew and apologized. He convinced me to meet with the disciples 11 days after the crucifixion. I was with his disciples in the upper room, and the doors were shut securely. But Jesus came and stood in our midst. He said, Peace to you. He didn't come through any door. He was just there. Then he came directly to me and said, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. All doubt vanished in an instant. I fell at his feet and proclaimed, My Lord, my God, and I worshipped him. 
Jesus held out his hand to me and said to me, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. During the next month or so, we saw Jesus in the flesh a number of times. He taught us that it was necessary for him to die for the sins of all men, to be buried and raised again from the dead. He explained that all who believed on him would not perish, but receive eternal life, forgiveness and sins and peace with God. He commanded us to not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you would have heard from me, for John truly was baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, and on all of Judah, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while we watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of our sight. And while we looked up steadfastly toward the heaven, toward heaven as he went up behold two men in white apparel stood by us and said men of galilee why do you stand gazing up into heaven this same jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in a manner as you saw him go into heaven then we returned to jerusalem from the mount of olives it happened just as he said on the day of pentecost 50 days from passover that the Holy Spirit came upon us and we spoke the truth in languages that we did not know. 3,000 people believed and were converted that day and Jesus' church was born. I deserted Jesus when he was arrested. I arrogantly refused to believe that he had risen from the dead. Yet the blood of Christ cleanses all those sins and thousands of others I've committed. Don't carry that sack of regrets anymore. Jesus lifted that burden and nailed it on the cross. I have peace with God and a promise of heaven when I die, and I am blessed. Jesus is calling everyone from heaven, from every nation, sorry, to forsake the sins and believe on him, to look to him for forgiveness and to have peace with God. He's reaching out to you, too showering his hands showing you his hands in his side will you believe won't you come to him <laughs>